I get told often that I look like you from like artists I interview to like random people at events. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is so on point. I thought that was me. Hey, I'm Maya and you're watching Billboard News. Well, thank you so much for coming today. I'm super excited to interview you. Thank you for having me. Of excited course. to be here. I have to congratulate you first because you've spent 25 incredible years in the music industry. And I'm curious, what is the biggest lesson and the biggest blessing of it all? Hmm. The biggest blessing, I'll start there, is to, of course, help others to be in a position to. Traveling is always beautiful, experiencing new places, yeah, cultures, food. <laughs> I'm a foodie. Um, lessons, you know, to remain a student. That's the biggest one because there's always something to learn, a position to learn, a new skill set to learn for anything in life. And uh, staying humble will keep you a student and then eventually a master so you can help others, yeah. I think you were recently in Jamaica, right, for the music video for your new single, <laughs> Wine, with Bounty Killer. Tell me about that new single. Funny story is I had a solo version of the video shot two years prior to reaching out to oh, Bouncy wow. Killer. <laughs> and I've always wanted a feature on that record. And so we went back down to Jamaica two years later and, you know, to the same location and put Bounty Killer in the video, inserted him, and it all looks cohesive now. <laughs> It's like you've worked with so many amazing like dancehall artists like Bounty Killer, Beanie Man, you know, other Jamaican acts, Sean Paul, Spice, you name it. Why have these like pop dancehall collaborations been so important and meaningful to you? Well, they're my friends. <laughs> you know, every time I go down there, it's usually for music, but then my associates or music friends become like family over the years and we understand the beauty of independency, but also working together. And so that's a big part of the culture too. And you can just reach out and pick up the phone and yeah. eat together and go out together, going to the dance halls and all the cool parties. Sunfest was one of those moments where we were just all kind of hanging out and until eight in the morning, the yeah. sun rises and you just don't stop. I think it's important also to just be authentic in representation. So it was important for me to be in Kingston in the heart of Jamaica uh, to capture the essence of the good vibes and the music, the culture, and the people. Yeah, mm -hmm. And totally. the dance. <laughs> <laughs> These three album anniversaries this year are incredible. You talk about your self-titled debut album, Maya, that turned 25. You talk about Mood Ring, that's 20 years old. And then come December, Sugar and Spice will be 15. What were your favorite memories working on those projects? I was a baby, I was a kid. Everything was brand new, you know, initially on my first project. Uh, working in a studio with Drew Hill for the first album was really like a family in a camp. So I had big brothers around me and they all play. Uh, I also play the violin and they all do harmonies and songwrite as well. So I learned a lot from them, watching them. And then the second album, I worked a lot with Wyclef and Jerry Wonder for a big bulk of Fear of Flying. So that was an amazing experience. Once again, surrounded by big brothers. You know, getting to work with Missy eventually on Lady Marmalade was awesome as a producer, Rock Wilder, and then of course the ladies of Lady Marmalade. It's just a beautiful journey and you know, I'm excited as well about what's to come and I just love music so it's a blessing to just still be here. 25 years later and still feel like it's brand new. Yeah. yeah. I did notice that when you performed in North Carolina, you did what needed to be done and you brought back that UNC jersey dress. Mm -hmm. I actually, like you, recreated it myself for Halloween this past year. I'm gonna show you this photo. <laughs> Oh wow. I literally oh, like wow. tracked down like a similar type jersey. That's amazing. Now, the one that you are wearing is the one I wore in North Carolina recently. Really? Yeah. But yours is like bedazzled, right? Well, yeah. I sent it to one of my girls in <laughs> DC who does all of the crystallizing. <laughs> But that one I couldn't find, the original. Oh yeah, no, I looked everywhere for that one. <laughs> and that was just no luck. So I tried my best. I actually did 
two different looks of you because I get told often that I look like you from like artists I interview to like random people at events. And then I also did the look that you did for the Take Me There video with Blackstreet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is so on point. I thought that was me. <laughs> Like, I've, I've paid attention to all the details. See. So yeah, I obviously admire everything that you've done, especially the looks, but I'm curious, do you have like any of your favorite all-time looks that you're just yes. like, ugh? I actually do. So my favorite all-time look is my very first album, and it's also my very first single, All About Me. Why? Because I sketched that outfit on paper, drew the designs that I wanted and I saw it come to life but this is something that I've been doing for years like I have this whole sketchbook of outfits that I wanted wanted to create before yeah. I signed my first deal and so that was one of them and the seamstress brought it to life and that was an amazing experience for me as a brand new artist. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well thank you so much for coming into the studio with us Maya. Thank you for having me. It was fun. <laughs>